uh, our YouTube channel. And uh, this morning, I'd like to bring to you a message that I've entitled God's Message to Your Unborn Child. And first of all, let me speak to the pregnant mothers that maybe are in here today. I know we have several and maybe those that are watching online. And I want to say to you that I, I need to speak. I'm going to be speaking to you because a lot of this message, you are going to have to relate it to your child, right? And uh, right now they cannot hear what I'm saying or understand what I'm saying. And so one day you will be able to share this message with them. But also I'd like to say to you pregnant mothers that are with us today that I know many mothers feel afraid to give birth. And the abortion industry is taking advantage of such fears. They will be happy to take advantage of your fears and convince you to abort your child. And we see that as a huge issue in our nation, and it's becoming a bigger issue every day with what's going on in our nation. And so I'm going to be speaking to this, and I want to speak to those that will be tuning in and watching either today or maybe they'll be watching this message in the months and even years to come. And I want to speak to you about God's message to you and your unborn child. Now, before we get into that, I also want to address some of the uh, common slogans and chants that are out there. And I want to remind you not to be fooled by these chants and these slogans. For example, you may have heard this one, freedom of choice, freedom of choice, freedom of choice. Everybody talks about freedom of choice, but of course the question has to be asked, who's choice, right? You see, I find that women who are getting abortions, and I say this as someone who has sat on the board of, of a pregnancy uh, clinic for, for many years now, and I get to see the real events that are happening. I get, I get to be part of seeing what really goes on behind the scenes, and I'm telling you that many women that, that come in seeking abortions are not doing so because they're seeking a freedom of choice. They actually are doing so because they feel they have no choice and they have no freedom. They feel trapped and abandoned and desperate and afraid. And sadly, they feel like they have no one to turn to except the abortionist. And so whenever you see this slogan, just remember this slogan is actually very fake. It's very fake news when it comes to what's really happening in the lives of these women. Or here's another one that's very popular, my body, my choice. Again, whose body are you talking about? You know, that child that is in your womb is not actually your body. It's not your body. That child, you will discover, has its own unique DNA. That child is not you. Right now, you are in that wonderful moment where there is a body inside your body, but they are two separate bodies. That child is a very different person, a very different human being. That, that child is not you. One day, when that child grows up, becomes a teenager, you're going to realize just how different they are from you, all right? And you know what I find really ironic about this slogan, my body, my choice? That slogan is being chanted by the same crowd that's, that was saying that you and I, all of us, must get a vaccine that had not been approved or is, is in this uh, state of where it's just right now going through uh, uh, ex the experimental COVID stuff, right? But they said, you must get it. Well, you know, what happened to my body, my choice, you see? And it really exposed the fact that they don't really believe in all of these things they're saying. It's just the fact that they want you to make choices that profit them, that profit them. And so I want to give you some good news today. I'm speaking again to you pregnant mothers. I want to give you some good news. We're not, we're not here today to, to beat up on you in any sort of way or to pressure you in any sort of way. That's what the world is doing. I literally would like for you to hopefully not turn me off and not, uh, not, not, not pause the video and start looking for something else. Give me just a few minutes 
Because I'm here to let you know that we do have good news for you. The pro-life movement and churches like ours are filled with millions of Christians that love you and love your child, and we have solutions to the problems you are facing. We, we have answers to the questions you have. We are here to tell you today that we have better choices than the choices the world is giving you. In fact, when we talk about abortion, we're not talking about children who might come into the world. We're talking about children who are already in the world. I want you to think about that. Your unborn child is already in the world. In fact, you want something to remember, write this down. Your child is already in the world. Your child is real. Your child is with you. Your child is with us. Your child is living and is in the world already. The question is not, should I bring the child into the world? No, the question is, should you throw out an innocent child that is already in the world? Because that's what abortion is. You see, our church is is about saving lives, because our faith is about saving lives. It is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who said, I am the way, the truth, and what? The life. It's all about life. And that's why I tell you today that God has a message for your unborn child. And that message is found in Jeremiah chapter number 1. I'm going to read it to you. Jeremiah chapter number 1 and verse number 5 and uh, if you want to look at it in your, in your Bible, you can. I'm going to be reading from the NIV this morning. And I'm going to place it here on this screen so that we could all see it together. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5. Here's what God says. God says, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as my prophet to the nation. Now, I want to point out a couple of truths that God brings up to unborn children in this statement. Number one, and you can write this down, God passionately created you. This is his message to unborn children. God passionately created you. Notice what it says in this verse. He formed you in the womb. He formed you. That word form is is. The same word used in the scriptures of someone weaving together a quilt or, or putting together something. He formed you. He, he cared about every aspect of you when he put you together. And it literally says that he's the one that put us together. He said, I formed you. I created you. In fact, there's something very much deeper here. Notice what he says. He says, I knew you. Before I formed you. Now that word knew, K-N-E-W, is the word in the scripture that is not just talking about I knew you, you know, I knew you as far as I understood who you were or I had an intellectual understanding of you. But this word knew is the word like we see in scripture where Adam knew Eve. It is a word that refers to love. I knew you. I loved you. Now, so with that understanding, read it again. God says, I loved you before I formed you in the womb. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that's an amazing truth that God loved you, not just before you were born. God loved you not just before you were conceived. God loved you before all of that. Before you were even born, before you were conceived, God loved you. So, bef so we talk about life starting. Some say life starts at birth. No. Listen, God knew you before birth. Some say life starts at conception. No, God knew you before conception. Conception is not even the real beginning. God says that he knows us and loves us before our parents even met. Amen? before they had any idea of what's going on, before they knew they were going to be pregnant, before they conceived, God says, I loved you. 
You were God's idea. Now, that's the message you need to tell your children. You were God's idea. He knew you. He loved you. And he formed you. God's love was before your birth, before your life, and before your conception. And before this speaker attacked me, all right? God loved you. In fact, hey, by the way, think about this. God loved you, it says in this text, before he formed you in the womb, which means that gives us insight into why he formed you in the womb. In other words, you were conceived and became a human being because God loves you. That's how much he loves you. And that's how long he's loved you. You wouldn't be here except for the fact God loves you. He's created you. You see, if you hear what I'm saying today, we're talking about more than being pro-life. We're pro-love. We're pro-love. We're a pro-love people with a pro-love God and a pro-love faith. God loved you before you were conceived, and that's why he conceived you, and this is our worldview. This understanding of who we are, where we came from, and why we're here today actually impacts every aspect of our life. Now, I want you to notice something else in what God says in this verse. God says the following. He lets us know that he has personally claimed us. God personally claimed you. He says, before you were born, I set you apart. In other words, in the womb, God claimed you. He planted a flag on you. You belong to God. God's message to unborn children is you are mine. Before you're your mom's, before you're your dad's, before you or anybody else's, you are mine. I have claimed you. I have personally claimed you. I have set you apart. You belong to me. Mothers, this human that you're carrying in your womb this child belongs to you. Yes, this is your child, but listen, it is God's child. This child actually belongs to God before it belonged to you. God gave you this child. This child is a gift from God. Amen? This is a very precious treasure that you're carrying in your womb. God knows your child, loves your child, has formed your child, and has claimed your child. And that is true for all of us. We are all in the middle of a story that God has, has written. God has written the story of our life. He has formed us and made us and claimed us for his purposes. And each one of us are living this life according to what God has called us to be. Number three. Notice this in the verse. God purposefully called you. He's not only claimed you, he's called you. He says, before you were born, I set you apart and what? Appointed you. Appointed you. Now, in Jeremiah's situation, he appointed Jeremiah to be a preacher. That's what he goes on to say. I set you apart and I appointed you to be a prophet. But the principle is true for everybody that God has appointed all of us to do something great for him. And this is a message to your unborn child that your child is a real human being created by God, loved by God, and has a purpose for living. A God-given purpose for living. And that calling in our life given to us by God is a multifaceted calling. It's not just one thing. It's many things. God has a career for your child, a career, something that this child is going to do and contribute to society. This child of yours is going to make a difference. It's also about relationships. God has a purpose in this child's relationship. There will be people that love your child and people your child loves. 
There's going to be people in this world that depend on your child. When your child grows and gets older, there's going to be people that will say that if it were not for this person, I wouldn't be who I am today. This is all according to the callings of God. Your child has skills and gifts and talents. Your child is unique. There's going to be nobody in the world like your child. And this is God's message, that, you're, that God knows your child, loves your child, forms your child, and claims and calls your child for something very unique for God's glory. Your child can be part of ministry, maybe even official ministry in the church like Jeremiah. There may be something that your child does in the church or in society that will make a difference in this world. You can guarantee it because that is why God is bringing your child into the world. And so I want to say again to you women who are pregnant, whether planned or unplanned, God has called you to motherhood. That's a calling in your life. And maybe you didn't know God was going to call you to motherhood. Again, it may have been an unplanned pregnancy. But nevertheless, it is a calling of God for you to be pregnant. To be a mother is a great, great calling in this life. And so if you are in that situation, and maybe you're afraid. Maybe you're afraid of being pregnant. Maybe you're afraid of having a baby. Maybe you're afraid of, can I raise this baby in this world? I'm here to tell you that You can do it in our church. These folks, if you look around, we love you and we will be here for you. We're not only here for your child, we're here for you. We're going to help you. We've got resources here that I promise you that we we can help you in every aspect of your life, your pregnancy, anything that's going on, even with help with your child. We've got resources. One of the big resources that we have is, again, the the pregnancy center that we're part of, the Horizon Pregnancy Center. And if you'll look into the notes or look into the comments and the YouTube, uh, once I'm finished preaching, we we will give you links to the Horizon Pregnancy Clinic that I'm telling you today, free of charge. You can go in there and begin to talk to expert people that are going to walk this journey with you. And I know you're afraid, and I know that a lot of people are speaking things into your ears that that make you nervous, but I'm telling you, friend, give it a chance. Give life a chance. Give us a chance to come alongside you and help you. We can provide you wisdom on how to be a parent. Maybe you were raised in a home that you never learned what it meant to be a good mother or a good father. Well, that's something you can learn very quickly, and we can help you with that. Maybe you need legal or financial advice. We can help you with that as well. Or really, at the end of the day, if none of these things help and you feel like, if I have this child, I I just don't believe it would be wise for me to raise this child. Well, listen, friend, there's always adoption, and we can help you with that as well. There are families out there that will gladly and lovingly raise your child so that your child can fulfill all that God has planned for your child's life. Again, we're pro-love. I told you, we're not here to put you down at all. We're not here to scare you. We're not here to talk about any of the things like you hear out in the world. We're here to help you. We are pro-life and pro-love for you and your child, which means we're pro-women, we're pro-children, we're pro-family. I'm telling you, the Lord loves you, and so do we. And I know sometimes people say, Pastor, you don't understand. This isn't my first pregnancy. I I've had abortions in the past. And what do you think about that, Pastor? Well, I'll tell you what we think about it. I'll tell you what we think about it, friend. Listen, we don't view you as as somebody to be judged or condemned. We actually feel like mothers who are getting abortions are the victims themselves. You're the victim of a world that is lying to you and a society that is taking advantage of you. So we don't judge you at all. You may have made these mistakes in the past, but we serve a God that forgives our mistakes, amen? He forgives. Every one of us in here have made mistakes and things we regret, and God has forgiven us, and he's healed us, and he's restored us, and God can do that for you. The real question is, what are you going to do this time? What are you going to do today? 
I want to challenge you this morning the following that you'll see here on the screen, and that is to choose life from this day forward. Choose your life and the life of your child. That's some big choices. Choose your life and the life of your child, and those choices go together. Another terrible slogan that I hear is, is uh, making a abortion safe and legal, safe and legal, safe and legal, you know. And I'm like, come on. There's nothing safe about abortion. There's absolutely, and I'm, I'm telling you, I know it's someone who works behind the scenes and has a, a little bit of insight into that industry. There's nothing safe about going into your womb and killing of that living baby that's inside of you. Nothing safe about it physically, nothing safe about it emotionally, nothing safe about it psychologically. We deal with mothers all the time who are still dealing with the terrible ramifications of abortions that they had, some of them 20 and 30 years ago. Don't believe these terrible slogans. You and your child are better off if you choose life. As hard as it may seem, and with all the questions you may have and the fears you may have, I'm telling you, friend, the best choice you can make is life, and we're here to help you. We're here to help you, your child, your family, your situation. Welcome to the family of God. Amen? We love you, and so does he. I want to give you one final passage of Scripture this morning, and I bring to you this one from Psalm 139, verses 13 through 16, and I read it from the New Living Translation. Here's what it says. This is the psalmist speaking to God about his, his existence before he was born. He said, you made all the delicate and inward parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion, as I was woven together in the dark of the womb. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. And that's God's message to you and to your unborn child. And let me just tell you a little bit about myself for those who don't know. The mother who raised me was not my birth mo mother. My birth mother left my father when she was pregnant with me. She didn't want to be married, and she didn't want to have me. Now, what happened was after she left my dad, some time went by, and she went to the hospital, and she gave birth to me and gave me away for adoption. Now, I was taken by a family, and my father found out about this, and he went through the courts and he went and got custody of me. He won that situation and was able to go and get me and bring me home. And eventually my dad, he remarried to a Christian woman. And I was raised in a solid home. In fact, I didn't even know that my mother that was raising me wasn't my birth mother. That's, it was so beautiful and wonderful. I had no idea. But I tell you that story to say this. All my life. I've been thankful that my birth mother did not choose to abort me. She was afraid. She was angry. She was at a low point in her life. And she could have chosen to end that pregnancy, which means it would have ended me. And I'm so thankful that she didn't do that. And all these years later, I don't even have a relationship with her. But I, I'm so thankful for her. Because God knew me. He loved me. He formed me and created me. And he claimed me. 
and he put a calling in my life. And I've been fulfilling all of that. And I have to give her credit for letting that happen. I believe God has a special place in his heart for mothers. Motherhood is a calling. In fact, think about this. The greatest story in all the world is the story of God himself coming to this earth to die for our sins, that we can be forgiven and saved, right? That's the greatest story of all. And Jesus, who is God, came to this earth, but think about it. Instead of coming as a grown man, God chose to come and be born of a woman whom we call lovingly the Virgin Mary. God, God is the one, my friend, who brings life into the womb. <laughs> he even brought life into the womb of a virgin. That lets you know God's in charge of pregnancy. And he chose as part of his redemptive story to let womanhood be part of it. God brings life to the womb. And God lets mothers bring life into the world. That's a high calling. Life is the right choice. Choose life. Choose motherhood, and I'm telling you, God will bless you for it. It's the right choice, and he will bless you for it, and we will help you in any way you need. God bless you. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, I pray that women and mothers will receive this message, not as the message of a man, a, a person, a, a mere human, but Father, I pray that they would hear it as God's message to mothers and to unborn children. The scripture could not be more clear or more plain that these children that are in the wombs are real human beings placed there by the love of God. They're real humans with a purpose and a calling in their lives. They not only belong to that mother, but ultimately they belong to God. And that means they're a beautiful, wonderful treasure. And therefore, we lift up our mothers this morning, and we pray for them. And all across this room, there are mothers and grandmothers who can say amen to this message because now they have experienced the blessings that have come through motherhood. But we all pray for those, those mothers that are pregnant right now and are struggling and are afraid. We remember what that's like. We know what it's like. But we pray for them that they would open their their hearts to this message of love and hope today and realize that they're not alone. God is with them. We are with them. And what they're carrying in their womb is one of the greatest blessings that they'll ever have in their life. And I pray, Father, you give them the strength and the courage to say yes to love and to life. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.